Learn from John D. Rockefeller when it comes to your retirement plan. All right, look, I'm not a fan of Rockefeller. I'm re reading my man's book uh, right here, The House of Rockefeller by, uh, by uh, uh, what's my man's, Morris Beal or Bell. I'll put a link in the, I think I can find the PDF. Uh, I don't think you can find any of the books anymore. And uh, it's great. And um, it's just, it's so, I'm like, it's just more war profiteering. I'm sick of war profiteering. And it's funny, when I was in college, I studied uh, the myth of the, uh, I studied, you know, capitalism, capital. I went to George Mason and libertarians love capitalists. We love Bill Gates of the world, you know, John D. Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan. Oh, what a fool I was. Um, yeah, just the, the war profiteering stuff just freaking pisses me off profit and just anyway so i'm reading this book and like everything i read i have to go off this tangent and say that don't make sense why did this railroad companies give rockefeller significant rebates on shipping and on top of that give him drawbacks i.e paying rockefeller when rockefeller's competitors competitors ship oil uh, it doesn't make sense i don't get it but anyway so i'm reading i'm researching that right now and i'm starting to get a gauge of why that it's just whole thing is corrupt. But anyway, so I come across this right here. Um, this is from uh, the prize chapter two, our plan, Rockefeller and the combination of American oil. So check this out though. Then I notice this. Rockefeller had two main principles. He was convinced that integration was a key to future success. One would say diversification. No, but that's not the main principle I want to focus on. And he maintained a strong cash position. The cash insulated his company from the bust and depressions and allowed him to take advantage of buying opportunities from downturns. He continued to expand his facilities while maintaining and improving quality and always controlling costs. So a couple things here. He maintained a strong cash position. It insulated him from the bust and depressions and allowed him to take advantage of buying opportunities. And he continued to expand his facilities. All right, now you're thinking, well, I don't have a business, Josh. I'm thinking your brain facilities, man. Read. Get some fresh air. Take your dog's walk. Throw babies up and down. It's going to expand your facilities. It's going to make you bring joy to your life. It's good. It's good. But then always controlling cost. Watching that bottom line. I, I You know, look, Rockefeller, look, I get it, man. Not, not, we'll dive more into this one. Bill's book is a long book. But always controlling cost. Be frugal. Not the sense of being miserly like Scrooge McDuck, but be frugal. Be, be grateful, man. Be grateful. And keep cash on the side. I, I tell you, I, I cannot stress enough the importance of keeping cash. Um, just learn from Rockefeller. Now, I have no idea how much Warren Buffett has in cash. I don't know. Do they say on the, let me see, do we see on that? I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to see if I can't find out. I'm not going to look hard. I just don't know. Let's see. Ooh, Motley Fool says Berkshire Hathaway has $149 billion in cash. What is the market share on Berkshire Hathaway right now? So we, I don't have my freaking calculator here. Uh, uh, I don't know. Anyway, what's the Berkshire Hathaway market cap? Do we know? Do we know? Market cap, $715 billion. So their market cap is seven hundred and fifteen billion, and they keep twenty percent in cash. Whoa, whoa, that's freaking nuts, dudes! I did not know that. That's nuts. Anyway, you hear that? Going back to uh, Rockefeller, cash insulated his company and allowed him to take advantage of buying opportunities. Interesting. I want to show you something. Else. I read this by Bert Folsom when I was in college. The myth of the robber barons. A new look at the rise of big business in America. The entre and uh, Folsom describes the, uh, the role of key entrepreneurs in the economic growth of the U.S. from 1850 to 1910. The entrepreneurs studied our Vanderbilt, John Rockefeller, uh, Andrew Mellon, uh, Charles Schwab. Does he talk about J.P. Morgan? we got to talk about J.P. Morgan. Um, I might have to revisit this under my new um, understanding of just what these guys have done. Man. I, just the, the war profiteering. Is just uh, You're not an entrepreneur if you're profiteering profiteering from the war um it's just bad so let me see if i can't find this other pdf real quick go i just <laughs> the author divides the entrepreneurs into two groups market entrepreneurs and political entrepreneurs the market entrepreneurs such as rockefeller succeeded by producing a quality product at a competitive price 
the political op, uh, entrepreneurs just got in, in bed with Joe Biden, essentially from back then. Yeah, that's that's such a such a crappy way to look at it because Rockefeller certainly was a political entrepreneur as well. That's for sure. All right, one second. You can download it too. And I'll put links in the show notes for the uh, the House of Rockefeller by uh, by my man Beal here. Um, what's his first name again? I can't remember. Anyways, this, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it, actually. It's an interesting book to read. Um, let me see. Yeah. Can you buy it? I don't think you could buy it. Yeah, unavailable, I thought. Yeah, for 600 bucks. Look at that. House of Rockefeller. It would be fun to go to uh, um, uh, yard sales and stuff, estate sales, and just look at the books they got on there. That may, that may be kind of fun. All right. Anyway, so uh, fall Rockefeller in your retirement. Love your thoughts.